Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. As some of you may already know, the new Animal Crossing game has been released and through peer pressure from my missus, I've decided to start playing it. Looks kind of weird, a six foot four metalhead playing a, uh, what I'd say is a kid's game, but uh, deal with it. And the element that we're actually interested in from that game is the shop system and how in real time, the shop is either open or closed, depending on the time of day it is for you. So we're going to try and recreate that inside of Unity. So we just pop over and we'll get started. So as you can see here, I've got a little sample scene set up with a few buildings. I'll put a link in the description where I've got this tile set from. It's by Mucho Pixels. You can find him over on Itch. So let's have a think first about what we want to do. We want to make each one of these buildings open or closed dependent on the real world time. So that means we're going to need a few things. We're going to need a class for our buildings, which is going to contain all the information about that building. We're also going to want a set of opening times. And then finally, we'll want one kind of utility class just so we can calculate all of our time differences outside of the actual script itself. So let's start by creating the opening time script. We'll create a new C sharp script. And we'll just call this opening times. And we'll open that up. Now this is going to be a non-mono behavior because this isn't going to be directly attached to a game object. We're just going to use this as its own individual object. So we can get rid of everything that we don't need. But one thing we do want to make sure, we want this to be serialized so we can see this inside the inspector. So we'll add the attribute system.serializable above the class declaration. Next, in here, all we're going to want is four integer values. That's going to be a public int open hour, a public int open minute, public int close hour, close minute. So it's pretty self-explanatory what these are going to be. This is going to be the hour in a 24 hour format, so 0 through 23 of our opening time and our closing time, and then the minute in case we want it as like half past or quarter past. So what we can go ahead and do, we'll just dress this up a little bit with a few attributes just to mitigate any human error. So first of all, we'll just add a header in. And we'll just call that building opening times. Now we can take advantage of the range attribute because we know that an hour in 24 hour format can only ever be 0 through 23. As soon as it hits 24, it reverts back to 0. So we can put in a range of 0 and 23 for our hours. We'll just copy that and pop it down on our close hour. And we'll also add in another header down here as well just so we can put in our closing times. And pretty much exactly the same, we're going to add a range in for our minutes between 0 and 59 this time, because 59 minutes per hour, we can't go above it, we can't go below it. And then finally, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to set some default values in here, just so whenever I create a new instance of this, it isn't all completely set to 0. So now whenever I create a new building, by default, my opening time will be 6 in the morning and will be closing at 5 p.m. And that's our opening times class completed. Like I said, this isn't going to be attached to a game object. This is just going to be used as a object on another class. So speaking of that other class, let's make it. This time, it's going to be the building class. Now this is going to be attached to every one of our buildings and in this we're going to need to be using the system namespace. That'll become apparent quite soon. So what do we want inside our building? Well just so we've got something to tell us which one we've clicked on, we'll create a public string and we'll call it building name. Next we're going to need our opening times. So we'll create a public opening times. We'll just call this opening times, and we'll set that in the inspector. Finally, we're going to need two private references to our open and close times, but this time we don't want them to be integers, we want them actually to be a time object. 
So to do that, we'll create a private time span and we'll call that opening time and we'll create a second called closing time. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is convert our opening time integers into time spans. So we'll just do this in our start method and really simple to do. What we'll do, we'll do opening time is equal to time span dot parse. Now time span dot parse takes in a string and we have two integers. So we'll just do a bit of string interpolation on those and make it into a time format. So the way that we can do that, we can do dollar sign followed by our speech marks and inside of our speech marks using curly brackets we can use variables so we can get our opening times dot open hour colon open another set of curly brackets and then we can get opening times dot open minute and close that bracket off and we can go ahead and copy this for our closing time we'll just grab closing time opening times dot closing hour and opening times dot closing minute and um, because we went ahead and put our ranges in we know that we can't actually put in an invalid time here okay so now we've got references to our actual opening and closing times as time span objects what are we going to do with those well we're going to want to compare those against the current time so this is where we'll create our last script which will be a utility script and we'll just call this time utils and open this up in Visual Studio and again this isn't going to be a mono behavior this isn't going to be attached to anything we can get rid of start and update and we'll make this a static class so we don't need to create a reference for it or an instance of it and we're just going to have one method in here that's going to be a public static and it's going to return a bool true or false and we'll just call this compare time and this is going to take in two parameters it's going to take in two time spans so we're going to need to be using the system namespace up here again and it's going to need to take in the open time and another time span close time now we want to check the current time against our open and close time we want to make sure that our current time is actually in between those two times so first of all we need to get the time it is now so we'll create one local time span we'll cache that just call that now and we can get date time dot now dot time of day so that'll bring us back the time span of the exact time now so the hours minutes seconds and milliseconds we're only interested in the hours and the minutes though and then all we need to do we'll check if now is greater than or equal to our opening time and now is also less than our closing time then we can return true else if it's not we'll return false so now whenever we call this we'll get a boolean true or false back whether or not we're within the opening time scale so if we go back to our building we can just add in a few simple things just so we can test this so we'll just do an on mouse down so when, when whenever we click on a building we'll check whether or not it's open and we'll also need a way to check if we are open so we'll do a private void open check and all we want to do we just want to print out in the console window whether or not this building is open or closed so we can do debug.log time utils dot compare time we'll pass in our buildings opening time and the closing time and we'll just check this with a ternary operator so that'll be the question mark so if this returns true so we are within our opening time we'll pop out the message of our building name is open or else if it returns false that needs to close that or else if it returns false we'll pop out again our building name is closed and we'll just call open check in our on mouse down function so now all our script should be pretty much finished all we've got left to do is create our buildings inside the inspector 
So if we open up our environment, we see we've got a, a left building here. So we've attached a 2D box collider just because we need that box collider to detect on mouse down. And we'll go ahead and we'll drag in our building. And we'll just give this the name Mike's House. Why not? And as you can see here, we have our opening times. By default, my house opens at 6 o'clock and closes at 5. So if we were to go ahead and play this, if I click on this left door here, we can see Mike's house is open because we're currently 22 minutes past 2. So that means we are within the opening times. But if I was to bring down my closing hour to, say, 1 o'clock, if I replay... No, my house should be closed because we're outside of that open time. And it is. And it's really just that simple. All we need to do, we need to make sure that we've got that box collider around our door so we can detect the on-click event. We drag in our building script. Call this pizza shop. That's open 6 till 8.30 at night. And then the hot dog stand, drag in the building. Zex Dogs that opens at 10 a.m. and then closes at 1 p.m. And all we need to do is just drag that building script onto any of our buildings and then inside of our open check, instead of just debug.log, we'd let the player inside the building or pop out a message to tell them that they need to come back at and then we can give them the closing, uh, sorry, we give them the opening time. And you could take this as far as you like. You could even go down the route like uh, Stardew Valley does. I know that isn't in real time, but for example, on a Wednesday, I think it is, the main shop isn't open, and that'll be an in-game Wednesday. But the way that you could do this, you could check whether or not the current day is a Wednesday. If it is a Wednesday, pop out a message saying this shop does not open on Wednesdays. If you'd like a little tutorial on how to do that day change, then uh, drop us a comment below and I'll see what I can do. But, like I said at the start, it's very simple. That's the tutorial finished. I hope to see you putting this into your games. It adds that little bit of uh, originality. Well, not so much anymore, but adds a bit of uh, a unique twist to it. So now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going back to my island. I'd just like to thank GT3000 for his continued support over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, pop over to the link in the description. Any amount is greatly appreciated and it really helps put out this content. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more bites as Unity hints and tips.